Let's talk about viewports. These nodes seem to be little known, but I use them all the time. In this video, I will present how I use viewports in free real games that I made in Godot. What does a viewport node do? Simple. It takes everything that is under it in the tree and renders it into a single texture. This generated texture can then be used as any other texture. For example, in a sprite. So why would anyone want to do this? Well, let's dig into our examples. Our first example will be from my very first Godot game, Save Eurydice. It's a two-player tactical game. In this game, when a unit is defeated, a dissolve effect is applied on its texture. The dissolve effect is obtained by a simple fragment shader, that we put on the texture rect of the unit here. But as you can see, only the image is dissolved and not the name of the unit, nor the strength, nor the black border around the texture. We would like the shader to treat all that part of the tree as one to dissolve it together. So to do this, we'll have a viewport node and the viewport node will display everything that is under it as a single texture. So we have to set the size of this texture. We've set it as before. Okay, as you can see, the viewport now creates a texture here from everything that is under it. To display this texture in the game, there's a cool viewport container node that displays the viewport. Now that all our elements are treated as a single texture, we just have to get the material, put it on the viewport container, and remove it from where it was before. And now everything is dissolved together. Our second game for our second use case is MadBlocks. It's a physics-based Tetris game, and you can play it alone or with a friend. It's really fun and it's free, so I really recommend you to try it. In this example, we'll focus on the layout of the UI. As you can see, on the left, we have the real playing area, which is composed of Node 2D, uh, Physics Node, etc. And on the right, we have the UI with info for the player. So right now, the structure of the window is OK. But what if in the future, we want to change this structure and put the play area on the right and the rest of the UI on the left? What if we could use the power of Godot control nodes to move around complex scenes composed entirely of Node 2D nodes? This is exactly what the Viewport Container node does. If you put a viewport under it and then the rest of your playing area under the viewport, it will be generated as a texture rendered by the Viewport Container. You can then move around this texture as if it was a normal control node. So now, if we want to switch the position of the playing area with the position of the UI, it's as simple as taking this, putting it here, et voila! Our final example will be from the game we are currently working on, A Good Day. It's an action online multiplayer game in which one team, the teens, tries to collect collectibles and retrieve them to their starting area and the other team, the adults, try to stop the teens from doing so. So here is a simplified project of what we want to do. We have an animated sprite of a flower which is moving in the wind, and we want to decorate our game by putting a lot of these flowers everywhere in the scene. So I've made a simple scene that tries to instantiate 7,500 of these animated sprites. When we launch the scene, we can first see that it's very long to launch. So maybe use this time to like the video if you like the content and subscribe to the channel for future videos. And now that the scene is launched, we can look at the profiler. And as we can see, we are over the line representing the budget for 60 FPS. So what is taking a long time here is the fact that we have 7500 sprites, but we also have that many times the logic to animate the sprites.
But what we really need in this example is 7,500 sprites, but only one time the logic. And of course, we can do that with viewports. Here, one viewport will render a texture with one animated sprite. And then in our main scene, we will instantiate a lot of sprites that will only display the texture created by the viewport. Let's try with 7500 sprites. First, loading the scene is a lot faster. And when we look at the profiler, we can also see that we are far below our frame budget. Just for fun, let's try to instantiate 75,000 sprites. Of course, it takes a longer time to launch. But we are still just within our time budget. That's it. In this short video, we managed to go through three viewport examples from real games. It turns out being able to render small views of a scene is really useful. I hope you liked this video. Don't hesitate to leave a comment on how you use viewports. And we will try in the future to make videos like this about Godot in real games, as well as a good day devlogs. So see you next time.